In the quiet town of Pella, Iowa, on a seemingly ordinary Monday evening in May 2020, a chilling incident unfolded behind the closed doors of an unassuming apartment complex. What began as a report of a domestic dispute quickly escalated into a nightmare, leaving a community in shock and investigators piecing together a harrowing tale of obsession, jealousy, and ultimately a deadly act that would forever alter the lives of those involved. This is the story of a tragic event that would come to be known as a defining moment in the history of Pella. A tale of secrets, betrayal, and a darkness that lurked beneath the surface of everyday life. On the 18th of May, 2020, a fateful Monday evening in Pella, Iowa, United States, the tranquility of an apartment complex was shattered when the police received a distress call at precisely 8.20 p.m. The call reported a potential domestic dispute unfolding behind 101 Glenwood 4, located in Marion County, Iowa, right in the alley. The concerned caller alerted the police to a troubling scene. Two individuals engaged in a heated argument. Responding swiftly to the call, the police arrived at the location to investigate the situation. What they encountered was a grim and tragic scene. Inside a parked vehicle, officers discovered a lifeless figure. The woman was identified as Tracy Mondebau, 47 years of age. She was found slumped in the vehicle's seat, secured by her seatbelt. Tragically, their efforts to aid her were in vain, as Tracy had already succumbed to her injuries. The puncture wounds on Tracy's body provided a chilling account of her demise. It became evident to the police that she had met a gruesome end, having been brutally stabbed. Among her injuries, a fatal stab wound to her chest and severe lacerations on her hands painted a horrifying picture of the violence affected upon her. Further investigation revealed that Tracy Mondebau, a mother of four young children, had been residing at the Glenwood apartment complex with a man named Nicholas Nick Boat. It was discovered that Tracy had recently relocated to Pella from her previous home in Ottawa. The tragic circumstances surrounding Tracy's death painted a disturbing picture. Her life was brutally cut short in the very vicinity of her home. Inside her parked car, it appeared that the assailant had attacked her before she could even unbuckle her seatbelt, leaving a community in shock and mourning and law enforcement grappling with the task of unraveling the mystery behind this horrifying incident. On that fateful evening, witnesses provided crucial information to the police, shedding light on the tragic events. According to their accounts, a struggle had ensued between two women, Tracy, who was inside the vehicle, and another individual standing outside. Disturbingly, the person outside the vehicle departed the apartment complex in a gray four-door Cadillac, leaving behind a scene of chaos. Eyewitnesses reported hearing a shouted phrase from the person outside the vehicle, he don't belong to you. Based on this information, the police began to piece together the puzzle, and they had strong suspicions about the identity of the individual driving the gray Cadillac. The chilling events of that evening bore a connection to an incident that had deeply unsettled Tracy earlier in March 2020. She had confided in the police, expressing fear for her safety, as she was dating a man named Nick Boat, who had recently separated from his wife, Michelle Boat. Tracy recounted an alarming encounter where Michelle had followed her from Pella to Ottawa, a distance of approximately 40 miles. Overwhelmed by fear, Tracy had even requested police assistance, asking them to meet her at a gas station for protection. Tracy and Nick's relationship had taken an abrupt and intense turn. They initially connected through an accidental Facebook friend request in February 2020 and swiftly progressed to their first date on the 8th of March. Within a matter of weeks, they had moved in together. Prior to Tracy's tragic demise, multiple reports had been made to the police indicating Michelle's displeasure with their relationship. Michelle had faced accusations of abusing Nick before Tracy's death and had violated a no-contact order on several occasions. She had been charged with domestic violence in March 2020. Both Nick and Tracy had informed the police that Michelle frequently followed them around town, 
creating an atmosphere of fear and tension. Shortly after the discovery of Tracy's lifeless body, law enforcement officers arrived at the residence of 55-year-old Michelle. They noted a gray four-door Cadillac parked outside her house, which bore visible traces of blood. The car's engine and rotors were still warm to the touch, raising suspicions further. Upon entering Michelle's residence, the police encountered her in a robe with her hair wrapped up in a towel, claiming to have just taken a shower. During their search, they found her clothing in the washing machine and a pair of latex gloves, seemingly stained with blood, concealed in the upper tank of the bathroom toilet. Surveillance footage from the 18th of May revealed Michelle's movements on that ominous day. Less than an hour prior to Tracy's tragic demise, Michelle had visited Nick's workplace at Vermeer Corporation. The footage captured Michelle tailing Tracy into and out of the Vermeer parking lot. Tracy had contacted Nick at his workplace that evening, and the footage indicated that when Tracy left the parking lot, Michelle closely followed her. Both vehicles departed the lot at approximately 8, 10 p.m. with a 911 call, reporting an altercation coming in just 10 minutes later. Forensic examination confirmed that the blood found on and inside Michelle's car belonged to Tracy, leading to the grave charge of first-degree murder being filed against Michelle Boat. The intricate web of events had culminated in a heartbreaking tragedy, leaving a community in shock and the legal system to grapple with the implications of this gruesome crime. In this riveting legal saga, Michelle, the defendant, has denied culpability for the first-degree murder charge, asserting that her actions were driven by an emotional breaking point. She conceded to the act of stabbing Tracy, but argued that her response had been triggered by the anguish of her husband leaving her for a younger woman, a moment she claims to have witnessed with traumatic effect. Nevertheless, the prosecution has meticulously crafted a compelling narrative contending that Tracy's tragic demise was not a mere result of a sudden emotional eruption, but a cold, calculated plan. The prosecutor painted Michelle as a woman consumed by resentment, an unrelenting obsession, and simmering rage in the wake of her husband's departure. The evidence, the prosecutor posited, will conclusively establish that Michelle's actions were premeditated, bearing the hallmarks of a carefully devised intent to harm Tracy. The prosecutor emphatically argued that justice would demand nothing less than a conviction for murder. Marion County Attorney Ed Bull, the prosecutor, revealed that Michelle had meticulously tracked Tracy's movements on the fateful day. He depicted Michelle as a hunter, armed with gloves and a deadly resolve, as she allegedly plunged a knife into Tracy's heart, ending her life. The court was informed that Michelle had shadowed Tracy, tracing her from a Burger King drive through to Nicholas's workplace on that fateful evening. She had surveilled their dinner meeting and relentlessly trailed Tracy back to her apartment complex. According to the prosecution, Michelle initiated her assault as soon as Tracy parked her vehicle outside her apartment complex, inflicting grievous wounds before Tracy could even undo her seatbelt. Further revelations emerged within the courtroom unveiling that Tracy's blood had been discovered both within and outside Michelle's car. As a haunting detail, Tracy was found clutching a handful of hair, DNA analysis confirming it to be Michelle's. The murder weapon remained elusive, but the prosecution contended that Michelle's gloves, concealed within her bathroom, held a sinister significance. They argued that the use of latex gloves on that fateful day was a deliberate choice emblematic of a well-thought-out plan. The prosecutor introduced evidence of a calendar discovered in Michelle's residence, meticulously marking each day since her husband's departure, building up to a climax the day she allegedly sought to reclaim him. To bolster their case, the prosecution revealed that Michelle had sent warning texts to Tracy, bluntly instructing her to stay away from Nick. The prosecution maintained that Michelle's intent to harm Tracy was clear supported by the presence of incriminating items such as a knife, gloves, and binoculars in her car on that ill-fated night. These elements, they argued, painted a portrait of a calculated and premeditated attack rather than a spontaneous eruption of emotion. 
In this gripping courtroom drama, Nick took the stand as a key witness, narrating the story of how he and Tracy had crossed paths through a peculiar twist of fate on Facebook. His testimony unveiled a tale of chance connections and blossoming romance, as he recounted how Tracy had inadvertently reached out to him, initiating a chain of messages that led to phone conversations and their first encounter. Their first date on the 8th of March, during which they hunted for deer antler sheds around Roberts Creek, solidified their connection. Nick reminisced about their effortless chemistry, describing their bond as if they had been friends for a lifetime. Their relationship flourished, and in April, Nick left behind his 20-year marriage to Michelle Boat, relocating to an apartment with Tracy. Nick's testimony delved into the complexities of his marriage with Michelle, describing it as a tumultuous union marked by what he believed was borderline abuse from the beginning. He revealed that Michelle constantly conveyed her lingering affections for her ex-husband, adding to the turmoil. Arguments over Michelle's parenting style and treatment of their children were frequent. Eventually, Nick grew wary of the constant strife and informed Michelle of his new relationship, resulting in their separation just three days after his first date with Tracy. The court heard of a troubling incident four days post-separation, where Michelle allegedly assaulted Nick, leaving him with visible injuries. Subsequently, a no-contact order was issued between Michelle and Nick, which Michelle purportedly violated on four occasions by contacting him and showing up at his workplace. Nick emphasized his bewilderment about Michelle's persistence in wanting him to return to their family home, given the turbulent state of their marriage. I don't understand, because she never loved me. The prosecution urged the jury to find Michelle guilty of first-degree murder, asserting that the evidence showcased a premeditated attack with the intent to remove Tracy from Nick's life. Assistant Marion County Prosecutor Jared Harmon painted the act as intentional, malicious, and driven by Michelle's desire to reunite with Nick. The prosecution summed up their case by contending that Michelle's actions were not prompted by an uncontrollable provocation, but rather that she herself was the provocation. In contrast, the defense argued that Michelle did not plan to kill Tracy that day, conceding that Michelle was indeed the person who had stabbed Tracy. However, they argued that Michelle had snapped upon witnessing her husband with another woman. They emphasized the legal fact that Nick and Michelle were still married, having spent 20 years together. The defense spotlighted the overwhelming challenges Michelle faced, including Nick's departure and the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, which left her isolated and in distress. They urged the jury to consider Michelle's state of mind within the broader context of those difficult times. The court learned of Michelle's devastating circumstances. Not only had Nick left her, but she also lost her job amid the pandemic, leaving her financially destitute. In her own testimony, Michelle spoke of the isolation and emotional turmoil she endured in the weeks leading up to the day of the stabbing. She described a life turned upside down overnight leaving her heartbroken and overwhelmed by sadness, despair, and devastation. In the end, the jury deliberated for a mere 45 minutes before delivering a verdict of guilty for first-degree murder. Michelle was subsequently sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, 